This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. It's a little bit of a longer video today, I'm afraid, but it's a video I've had many, many requests to do. Um, people who are relatively new to the art of playing lead guitar always at some point pose the same question to me, um, you know, in lessons and so on. And that is, how do you know what to play next? Uh, what's going through your mind as you're playing the solo? Are you planning it like a master chess player two or three moves ahead? Or is it just happening spontaneously? Well, I'll tell you what, here's a solo that I did, single take, uh, warts and all, and then I'm going to show you, or describe to you, blow by blow, what's going on as I'm in my head as I'm uh, playing the solo. <laughs> And as promised, here's uh, what I'm kind of thinking as I'm in the thick of it uh, playing all of those licks. Solo explanation. Okay then, let's see what we can learn about solo construction from what I played there. Um, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping in terms of what I was playing over. There's basically two riffs going on here. Um, one is in A and it goes like this. <laughs> And then we modulate up to B and play a similar thing that goes like this. Like that. Now over the sections that are in A, I'm basically playing A blues style sort of stuff, you know. Mainly A minor pentatonic, but I'm occasionally sneaking in the, the major six there. for more of a Dorian kind of feel. And then essentially just uh, taking the uh, the same ideas up from A minor pentatonic and all of its associated patterns up to B minor pentatonic. For when we go into B, you find this kind of thing. Um, I think it's uh, you'll see it in the Ace of Spades solo, Fast Eddie uh, on the Motorhead track. Um, but it's also reminiscent of things like... Um, Lagrange, Billy Gibbons, or Texas Strut by Gary Moore. Uh, well tried and tested kind of thing to do. And then sort of turning it round, um, I've got the, the infamous Hendrix chord, you know, the... That E7 sharp 9, and, you know, I'll, I'll basically I'll... Often I'm thinking of that as just being part of the A minor kind of tonality, but, you know, I'll probably uh, play E minor pentatonic over that over that in, in places but that's not what we're really here to talk about what we're going to be discussing today is you know how i'm constructing the solo the phrasing and so on what's what's going on in terms of how i'm grouping the notes together so let's have a look at the uh, the first few licks okay let's stop that there and have a look at that it's going So just A minor pentatonic. A um, couple of things to note there. First of all, it's it's quite clear that we've got a question and answer call and response thing going on. There's the question. Here's the answer. Um, so that that's one element of it. But the other thing which it, which also contributes to making it work is the fact that the uh, the main kind of feature note in that question, like which is this bend here. 
that's happening on the bar line okay which means that everything that comes on beat one of the bar basically that, that comes in at the same time as the backing track which means that all of the stuff that precedes that is actually happening before the beginning of the first bar so i'm playing all of this over the counting and then that happens you know on the beginning of bar one so start just a little bit ahead of the bar line so you've got that question and answer kind of thing there which is giving us something like that uh, let's move on see what's next so a minor pentatonic again just coming out at the top end of pattern two and this is something that i think i probably learned from clapton that, that's almost like another answer to the question so we've got question answer and another answer okay so it's like you'll, you'll find that in in many blues solos especially you'll have question answer answer rather than question answer or call response response if you prefer to think of it like that so what's next oh there's me phone that's what's next um let's take a look and see what's happening now <laughs> Okay, so I'm basically going back to that opening question phrase again. Like that, but I'm developing it differently. So, something like that, I think it was. Um, the important thing here is I'm going back to something I played earlier, and I'm doing something different with it. So the first time I played, I just basically did that with it. That's what I did. Um, but this time I'm putting this on the end. That kind of thing. Basically taking that little sort of Chuck Berry type feel. That's a very powerful thing that you can do in a solo, which is to basically get a number of different endings for the same lick. Uh, play the lick. Part of a question answer or question answer answer kind of uh, format and then go back and play the lick again but end it differently and the different ending kind of sparks a different response to it in, if you're thinking of it in that sort of call and response kind of phrase um let's see what's next okay so at this point in the soul i'm thinking yes i've got the uh, the transition up to the b section um imminent in a, in a moment i'm thinking about kind of how i'm going to get there so it starts off with this little something like that. like that i think it was but the main meat of this next part is the like that okay which takes me uh up into the the, the b section that part um so there are one or two ways that i like to kind of handle a transition like that uh one and they're sort of polar opposites of each other we'll see another one later on um this first one is i like to play something that's just a little bit more densely packed and busy here if you've got some flashy um kind of twiddly type licks this is a good place to sort of drop them in as you're transitioning up to the uh, the next you know kind of section of the solo um so it was just <laughs> just that double stop there that e and g double stop coming out the top end of pattern two there and the other thing which makes this kind of sort of a little bit um tension and release if you like is that i'm moving chromatically and instead of going straight from there to there essentially pattern two of a minor pentatonic up to pattern two of b minor pentatonic what i'm doing is moving it chromatically these are wrong notes but because you don't hang on to them for long enough for them to sound wrong, they just sound colourful and it just adds tension. And when you get to, um, you know, the, the, the next section, you, you've kind of uh, created, you know, uh, a more dramatic transition. Um, so anyway, that's how I'm getting up into B minor pentatonic. Pattern two, let's see what I'm doing up there in uh, with, with that pattern. Again, you can kind of see that there's a sort of a question answer thing sort of going on there. Question. Answer. 
however it went like that something like that let's see what's next <laughs> then again the, we've done the question and answer arguably this next bit is is the same sort of thing again an answer <laughs> something like that i played you know so you got um that questiony bit up there um something like that and then something like that so again another response to the the question sort of thing so i'm thinking almost in groups of three here a lick then two responses to the lick then that's there what what's that all about then well I'm just basically filling up a bit of space, really. Um, the, the thing that's um, making this work, I suppose, is the repetition. Always, as I say, a powerful thing to do in a solo. Um, but there's a little bit of rhythmic displacement there. Um, what we're basically getting is that note is landing on the beat on the first time through. So, so that's and one and two and three and four. And it's landing on it's landing on the beat again the second time, but it's landing on a different beat is the point I'm making. So as the lick starts each time, it's it's beginning in a different part of the bar, which makes it, you know, sound just that little bit more displaced and therefore interesting. So that's what's happening there. Let's see what's uh, coming next. Yeah, this is where we're on the, uh, the the E7 sharp nine chord. So I'm just playing a little bit of E minor pentatonic there. And again, we've got a sort of transitional part here where we're going back to the A chord again. So it's a little bit more sort of densely packed. Not a lot, but a little bit more busy than uh, what's been going on in the, the previous bar because we've got that transition there and it's, it's a good way of, you know, kind of, building the tension as, as you transition back into uh, the, the A section again. So what we're doing here. So we've got this link. There we go. Beg your pardon. Um, yeah, again, a little bit of that rhythmic displacement sort of thing going on there. I'm basically here coming out of the top end of... Pattern four of A minor pentatonic. But the main point here is that I'm going to be doing a bit of repetition. Let's see what happens. Yes. Yeah, so. so I'm getting again play a lick, then develop it, or well, repeat it and kind of develop it in a different way. Like that. Same lick, but just ends slightly differently. Very effective technique. Let's move on. Okay, so what I'm doing down here, just basically take that, those notes there, like that, bending that D up to an E, and think and kind of hitting the, the G note on top. Move it down an octave, or, you know, if you're down an octave, move it up an octave. It's something like the lick I'm playing with. And then we've got more of that thing that we saw earlier. I'm doing it in A minor this time, but I did it in B minor uh, the first time you saw it. Now this, we're approaching that B section again here, and I'm thinking about, again, managing the transition to get from the A minor section up to the, the B minor section. So I said there was a couple of ways I'm going to do it, and another way you can do it is the exact opposite of what we've been talking about so far on these transitional parts, you know, where you, you make it a bit busier. Just play, just hang on to one note, let it howl over the whole change and just let, let it kind of float on top of it. So, and then I come out with that, because this note here, this D note, and by extension the bend up to E, both of those notes are in the A minor pentatonic and the B minor pentatonic, so I can just kind of hang on to that bend and just allow it to um you know go into it in a minor and come out of it in b minor is what i'm trying to say uh, let's see what's next. yeah 
Again, I'm bringing the, the, the sixth in there for thinking. B minor pentatonic. I'm getting the sixth in there. Just playing something that's um, just a, a, essentially a new opening gambit to uh, the, this lick. It's almost like a question and answer sort of thing going on again. So we've got the question. Uh, answer. See what, how, how it works? You know, kind of similar length phrases, equal but opposing. Do you know what I mean? It's like the, the kind of, um, almost kind of like like a scales, you know, where you've got scales as in, you know, kind of weighing machine. Um then again notice how many times I'm going back to that lick there it's not because it's just I'm running out of ideas it's just because I've played it a couple of times already and returning to something that you've played previously does help to give a solo a sense of continuity um, you know and it means that you can get more mileage out of every lick that you know Basically something like that where I'm playing E minor pentatonic over the E7 sharp 9 chord. And then into like an A blues lick down here to finish on. So what we're talking about here then, well, basically going back to the same lick and ending it differently. Um, you know, quite often you'll get away with uh, repeating a lick several times and just playing different endings to it. And the different ending sparks uh, something of a, a, a different response to it. Okay. Um, you know, if you're thinking in that sort of question and answer, or as you saw in a couple of places, question, answer, answer sort of format, then, um, you know, if you end a lick differently, then the, the natural kind of response that you will play to that lick will be different. Um, repetition, keep returning to the same lick. Um, you know, just play the, play the same lick, but with different endings, or just play the same lick um, in different contexts. You saw how we played the... That part there, in both A, in both B minor, like it was there, and... And in A minor, it, it helps to make both parts of the solo sound connected if you can use similar motifs um, in both of them. So hopefully that's given you some sort of insight into what I'm thinking, as, as much as I am thinking about what I'm doing when I'm playing a solo. Hopefully it's been some help and um, you can go away and have a bit of fun with it. So there you go. That is pretty much what is you know happening inside here as I'm playing a solo. Those are the kind of things that I'm thinking about. Repetition, call and response, question and answer, or question answer answer um you know all of that sort of stuff that i've just been describing there incidentally there is a full tab for the solo in both guitar pro and pdf formats along with a clip of me playing the solo and that explanation you've just seen there and the jam track to play along with all of that is up on my patreon page there's the address on screen and the link is in the description it's only three dollars or two pound fifty a month and you get access to all of these extra goodies that go along with these youtube videos i want to say a massive 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 thank you to everybody who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down below. And that's pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative, and perhaps a little bit inspiring. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Uh, don't forget the live stream. I always say this. Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time, where we have a beer and a chat about music and guitars and whatever else might crop up. Fantastic way to kick off the weekend. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.